Welcome to the Shit You Should Wipe podcast with me, Dr. Debbie, where I teach you how to wipe the shit in your life and on your mind that's holding you back without having to turn your life upside down, become a completely different person or burn old bridges, but simply by potty training your brain and bringing more you into your life. I promise it's not rocket science, it's just mental hygiene and you can do it too. Hello Wipers! So today I'm quite excited to talk about time management. And there's a good reason for, there's several good reasons for that. Um, one, I used to be a pro productivity geek. I tried so many different techniques. Some of them did what they promised and I've been highly productive in my past. So much so that when I got married, some researchers from the lab where I did my PhD recorded a funny video for me in which they all wore a face mask with my face on it while doing things in the lab so that it looked like there were five or ten Debras working in the lab all at the same time. So that's to give you an idea of what I must have looked like. Looked like. <laughs> The second reason is I've always seen my mom running after time. So I simply believe that you could catch up um, with it. But that's until I burnt out. Now, it wasn't a big explosion burnout, but rather a slow burning out. So insidious, in fact, that I did not realize I was burning out. You know, it kind of reminds me of the story of the frog. I don't know if you've heard that one. If you drop a frog in a pot of boiling water, which I would never do. I don't know why someone would. <laughs> But uh, supposedly it will jump out of the pot. But if you place a frog in a pot of cold water and then slowly heat it up, uh, apparently you will cook the frog and it won't jump out of the pot. And I think it's, it's probably uh, what this slow burning out is. You don't realize um, it's cre creeping up on you. Um, and so I was slowly, gently burning out and all of a sudden uh, I had a concussion, which meant um, I couldn't keep being so productive and active and which means um, I had a lot of time to think about my relationship uh, with time. So this is why I'm really excited to talk about productivity and time management today. So a lot of my clients come to me and say, oh, if only I had better time management skills or, oh, if only I were better with time. And they ask me if I can help with that, <laughs> to which I say, I probably, probably can. But in my head, or sometimes I tell them, I think the issue is probably not with time. It's probably with choice. Um, and this is what I want to talk about today. Because our society praises productivity. After all, we all live in a capitalistic society and productivity is at the core of that. And so it makes us believe that if you have good time management skills, you can neatly fit every single thing you need to do into the given amount of time you want to allocate to it. And so it's just a matter of skills. So first, um, I want to point out that this is not the definition of time management, but the definition of productivity. And second, productivity is a trap. <laughs> It's a trap that we can picture in our head as a conveyor belt. When, so imagine a conveyor belt with containers on it. 
you know, like, um, like in a factory. We're happy when we can keep up with the conveyor belt and manage to fill all the containers on the belt. But as soon as we don't keep up with the belt um, or don't fill up all the containers on the belt, we feel either too busy or like we're wasting time for not filling up all the containers. But the truth is we've inherited a set of rules on how to use time that is not really that old on the scale of human history. Imagine a time before clock. Think like before medieval time, which is not that long ago. Time was not a commodity that had to that you had to spend a certain way. Time was not separate from life. Time was a component of life. And rhythms of life what we call time now, emerge from the task we did themselves. Yeah? If you're a parent, you might have experienced this shift from clock time to rhythm rhythm time, whether you liked it or not, (laughs) in the first few months of life of your newborn or newborns in our case, where you're immersed in the tasks of feeding, of changing, of sleeping or not sleeping. In fact, I suspect that this shift is partly why so many new parents struggle. Of course, there is the sleep deprivation. That is a thing, of course. But there is also this (laughs) uncomfortableness of being in task rhythm time rather than the more familiar and thus thus more reassuring clock time. And I think also probably why also some methods for putting kids or babies on a schedule uh, emerge because that's more the time we're used to. I also suspect it's why some people, myself included, um, like to go tramping and for non-Kiwi Kiwis, that means hiking. Don't go getting weird ideas. Um, Because when you do a multi-day tramp or hike, um, your time is a task time. You just walk, eat, sleep, and that sets the rhythm of life. So if you're a tramper or a hiker, you probably have a sense of this kind of time. So anyways, since the invention of clocks, which, sorry for that, which I believe was for monks to coordinate their morning prayer, we've shifted from the stuff life is made of to a source that can be bought and sold, sorry, a resource that can be bought and sold, which is the principle of having a job. So it becomes difficult to value our time not according to its usefulness. Okay, but you're like very interested indeed. (laughs) Well, I hope that's what you're thinking. (laughs) But I do need to get some things done. Um, And some of you that know me know that I've been productive in my days. Some I might even have been called a productivity geek. Indeed, I've tried so many apps and methods. The problem with most of these time management tools is that they're based on productivity. Let's take the Pomodoro method, for example, which is well known. Um, You learn to, it's a method in which you learn to estimate the time a task takes. And by... Um, 20 minute increments and you take a 5 minute break every 20 minutes don't get me wrong Um, you should take a break every 20 minutes a 5 minute break every 20 minutes and it is quite efficient at making you more productive but it does not address the bigger picture which is when you are focused on time management or increasing your productivity You're avoiding making choices. I'll say that again. 
when you're focused on time management or increasing your productivity, you're avoiding making choices. The first time I encountered this idea, it hit me like a brick because I've always been a choice phobic. So I knew, I knew instantly that it was true. And it's no coincidence that being a choice phobic, I became a productivity geek, right? The more you believe you can or should find time for everything, the less pressure you have to ask yourself if it's the best use of your time. So this is why I say so often, and I said it at the beginning of the episode, time management is really choice management. It's actually the art of not doing, the art of saying no, and the art of idleness combined. So today's why is the good old less is more. What if you started in the background of your brain to question productivity and or our consumerist culture and started to simplify or some might say to condomary your tasks? That is what choice management is. Decluttering your to-do list, decluttering what you decide to do. So here comes the actionable tip part. So first, the first thing you could do is to create a to-don't list. Yes, it is a thing. Um, it was invented or maybe just popularized by the author Adam Grant and it ad identifies the things that one, take up your time for no good reason and two, offer minimum re reward. So think about the things that take up some of your precious time and energy like helping anybody who asks because it's the nice thing to do or mindlessly binging Netflix or maybe working during family time. I mean, it's really for you to pick and choose. For me, for instance, I wouldn't put Netflix on the list because I do like uh, watching my TV show. It's part of my routine. Uh, but I will put not working during family time on it. So it's for you to... Um, See what are those things that take up your, your time and you wish they didn't or that take up your time and offer minimum reward. Um, and this is actually one of something some of my clients struggle with because of all the social conditioning we have and because of our nervous system response, right? We're conditioned to do some things. So it's one thing to identify your value. It's another to identify what you don't want to do and be able to say no to them and to other people. I think that's the, the difficult bit. Now, the second uh, actionable thing you can do is to actually declutter your to-do list. So... In my ebook, The Mental Offload, I talk about the to don't list and I also offer a flow chart to declutter uh, your to do list. So I'll read to you some of the questions. The first question I ask is Does it take more than five minutes to do? If the answer is no, can you do it now? If the answer is yes, do it now. <laughs> if the answer is no, Create a five-minute list and when you've accumulated a certain number of five-minute tasks, just set an hour aside to do them. So if it does take more than five minutes, the main question is, will you regret not having done it on your deathbed? If the answer is no, second question to ask is, is there a deadline and a consequence for you or your loved one for not meeting the deadline. Because often we think, yeah, there's a deadline, but is there actually a consequence to not meeting the deadline? If the answer is no, then I'll ask you, do you enjoy doing it? If the answer is no again, don't do it. Or put it, even better, put it on your to-don't list. 
If the answer is yes, then it doesn't really belong on your to-do list because it's not a task, it's, an, it's a hobby. Okay. Now, if you said yes to will you regret not doing it on your deathbed, then I'll ask you again, is there a deadline? If the answer is no, great, put it on your to-do list. If the answer is yes, then I'll ask you again, is there a consequence for you or your loved one for not meeting the deadline? If the answer is no, again, you're welcome to put it on your to-do list. If the answer is yes, do it first. It needs to be at the top of the to-do list. Um, so there you go. I think you've got mm, the main questions from the flow chart I created. It, it's probably hard for you to picture in your mind. So if you want it, you can uh, download it. I'll put a link in the show notes. So mm, actionable tip number three, and that's a very simple one, but not necessarily easy one. I would like you to shift your default answer to no instead of yes. It doesn't sound, it sounds selfish at first, um, but you already have a default answer, which is probably set on yes if you struggle with time. You're probably saying yes to this, yes to that, and then try to figure it out. So what if you just simply switched, switched your default answer to no and then decided if you wanted to say yes to it. Actionable tip number four is to have nothing times. So this is one of my favorite thing and I've done it for decades. I didn't even know. I don't even know still if it's a thing or not, but I've done it forever and I think it helps. So I'll just share an anecdote. <laughs> when I met my husband about 18 years ago, well, we didn't live together straight away. So let's say 15 years ago um, or sometime in between. He asked me one Sunday or one day, what are you doing on Sunday afternoon? And I was like, nothing. I said, great, let's do something. And I was like, no, I'm doing nothing. He's like, great, we can do something. I was like, no, sorry. I'm actually planning to do nothing. My activity is to do nothing. And I think he was a bit mind blown at the time. Um, it should have given him a clue of how cray cray I am. <laughs> but hey, he still married me. <laughs> and now he also has nothing times. <laughs> um, so yeah, just play with that one. So there you go. Um, that's today's episode on time management. I hope you learned a few things. If you want to um, find a summary and more details uh, about those ideas, uh, please download the mental offload. I'll put a link in the show notes. Now have a good uh, day and I'll, well, see you next time. Bye. And if you want fresh wipes and actionable tips every single week in your inbox, you better get on my email list. It's called The Brain Wipes. Also make sure to download The Mental Offload. It's my free ebook to learn how to start wiping things off your to-do list. It's been known to help people save precious time and energy. It's also been called What Everybody's Psychic Butthole Needs.